It's history's worst crime. Millions of men, women, and children killed in the Holocaust. It led to history's worst miscarriage of justice. The vast majority of the perpetrators of Nazi crimes against humanity, murder, rape, enslavement, torture, got off scot free. Thousands of Nazi war criminals escaped. Many with inside Brunner, today's most wanted Nazi. There would be no higher priority for law enforcement than to catch him and bring him to trial. We hunt the most notorious killers of all time. This is a bit suspenseful. On Unsolved History, Hunting Nazis. History has no greater crime and no greater miscarriage of justice. Nazi criminals are going free every single day in this country and many others. How did these war criminals escape? Have they continued their murderous ways? Alois Brunner is still alive. He is without question the most heavily implicated Nazi criminal alive in the world. To get to Brunner, we start with lessons from the life and death of Auschwitz concentration camp doctor, Joseph Mengele. It was Joseph Mengele who frequently met the trains that brought in new shipments, so to speak, of Jewish victims, men, women, and children. It was Mengele who often stood there and waved prisoners to the right or the left. In one direction, if they were deemed capable of work, in the other, they were to be gassed almost immediately, murdered. He lived in such fear that he kept a loaded pistol at his bedside. He believed the Israelis were behind every tree. This shack on a small Brazilian farm was Mengele's final home. In 1979, he had a stroke, passed away, and was buried under an assumed name. In 1985, finally, there was a concerted governmental effort to trace his fate. And very quickly, the trail of money from the Mengele Farm Equipment Company in Germany led to Brazil. People who committed some of the ghastliest crimes in recorded human history mass murder, enslavement, torture, rape. Most of those Nazi perpetrators managed to escape justice. There were tens of thousands of Nazi perpetrators in Europe when the war came to an end. Some hundreds at least, perhaps more, came to North America. The fact that the Nazi criminals, the vast majority of them, were allowed to go unpunished is a terrible perversion of justice. OSI, the Justice Department's Office of Special Investigations, has a unique mission. Track down and prosecute Nazi criminals in the United States. Over half a century after World War II, OSI estimates that there may be hundreds of Nazi war criminals still at large in America. The overwhelming majority of Nazi criminals who came to the United States after World War II got here the old-fashioned way by lying about their wartime pasts. It was quite easy to get a false identity to help one get away. But some of the worst war criminals had help from powerful friends. Alexandras Lalekis was chief of the Lithuanian Gestapo in the city of Vilnius. Under his watch, nearly the entire Jewish community was rounded up and executed. They were taken out in groups where giant pits had been dug, and there, 50,000 plus people were shot to death individually. Decades later, an OSI investigator digging in a Lithuanian archive pieced together the puzzle of Lalekis' illegal journey to America. For nearly three decades, Alexandros Lalekis lived as the quintessential quiet neighbor in Norwood, Massachusetts. But it took a 10-year investigation, the discovery of an order condemning a six-year-old girl to death, and declassified CIA documents to finally get Lalekas deported. And how is it that the CIA had information about Alexandros Lalekas? We found that the CIA had employed Lalekas in Europe after World War II. That still secret CIA connection earned Lalekas entry into the United States. U.S. intelligence also worked with dozens of other top-level Nazis. 
senior Nazi war criminals made deals with people who had the power to get them out of Europe, which for the most part were either the victorious allies or church organizations. Before the Nazis developed gas chambers in the camps, they killed many, many Jews by using specially constructed gas vans. Those vans were constructed so that the exhaust could be pumped into the back of the van where the victims were locked up. They died a very slow, excruciating death. Walter Ralph was the man in charge of the gas vans. As the Third Reich collapsed, Ralph was captured by U.S. forces. This, is Walter Ralph. this declassified 1945 Army interrogation report on Ralph is clear. Ralph is considered a menace if ever set free and failing actual elimination is recommended for lifelong internment. Ralph wasn't eliminated, just the opposite. Ralph managed to escape after the war by making a deal or agreement with American intelligence and Switzerland. The Nazis were arguably the only real winners of the Cold War because after the end of hostilities, the democracies and the Soviet Union were squaring off. They lost interest in the perpetrators of the last war. Living with his family under his real name, he settled into a comfortable middle-class life. Ralph died peacefully in 1984. As this shocking video shows, Ralph not only cheated justice, he died with honors from fellow Nazis who'd also found a haven far from the death camps of Europe. Unsolved history could prove where Bruner has been hiding. There are few mass murderers in history who would have as much blood on their hands as does Alois Brenner. If he is alive, there can be no higher priority for law enforcement than to catch him and bring him to trial. He sent hundreds of thousands of men, women, and children to their deaths. He spent much of the war doing nothing but finding better, faster, more efficient ways to kill more and more Jews. And he was diabolically good at this task. Alois Bruner was never captured, never killed. He got away. Has Alois Bruner been living in Damascus as Georg Fischer? It remains to be conclusively established whether Georg Fischer is Alois Bruner. Rosenbaum needs hard evidence. There have been hundreds of false sightings of Nazis since the war. I've seen too many cases in which individuals were alleged to be Mangala, long after Mengele had actually died. I think it's my job to be skeptical. Deschner secretly took photos of the man living as Georg Fischer. He also obtained this handwriting sample. If it could be established that Georg Fischer is alive and is, in fact, Alois Brunner, it would be an enormous contribution, both to history and to justice. Joseph Mengele, Walter Ralph, and Alois Brunner never paid for their crimes. Even now, dozens, perhaps hundreds, of Nazi war criminals may still be alive, still free. Is it too late for justice? The people who murdered millions of Jews in Germany, if they're still alive today, they are as guilty as they were when they pulled the trigger or when they opened the gas valves. And if we can find them, they ought to be caught and tried and brought to justice. There's an even more important reason to pursue these people even into old age. By prosecuting Nazi criminals, even into their 80s, we send an urgent message to the would-be perpetrators of war crimes, genocide, and crimes against humanity in the future. We can't bring back the victims of the Holocaust, but we can keep alive their memory and the cause of justice. That's the best way to serve the past and make sure history never repeats itself. <laughs>